SwiftUI lets us attach gestures to views, and these gestures can also be animated. And we get a wide range of gestures to work with, including tap gestures, so any view can respond to being pressed, or drag gestures, so you can drag views around the screen if you want to. Now, we'll be looking at gestures in more detail later on in this course, but for now, let's try something relatively simple. A card on the screen we can drag around, but when we let go, we'll snap back to its original location. First, our initial layout. We'll say in our body there is a linear gradient, and the gradient we'll use is going to be a gradient with colors of dot yellow and dot red. I'll start this thing in the top leading, so top left in English language, and bottom trailing, so bottom right in left to right languages, like that. I'll give this thing a fixed frame with a width of 300, height of 200. And then clip this thing using clip shape, using rounded rectangle, corner radius of well, 10. There we go. So it's sort of a sort of credit card size thing on the screen. Now we want this thing to move around the screen based on the location of the user's finger. And this requires three steps. First, we're going to add some state to store the amount of their drag. So we'll say at state private var drag amount is cg size zero. So cg size, I'm going to call graphics size, actually an older API from Apple. Size zero is what we're saying. There's no size, no width, and no height. Second, we want to use this size to influence the card's position on our screen. Now SwiftUI has a modifier just for this called offset, which will offset a view on x and y coordinates based on where we pass into it. But it won't move other views around it. It just moves it on the screen by itself. Now you can, if you want to, pass in discrete x and y values. However, by no mere coincidence, offset also accepts uh, CG size. So we can say, I'll add this modifier to our linear gradient, dot offset drag amount, like that. Now comes the important part. We can create a drag gesture and attach it to our card. Drag gestures have two extra modifiers that are useful to us here. One's called on change, and it will run a closure whenever the user moves their finger a little bit, a little bit again, again, again. And also on ended, which will be fired when the user lifts their finger. Again, we can attach a closure and it will run to end the drag. Now, both these things are given a single parameter to them, which describes the drag operation, where it started, where it is currently, how far it moved, and so on. Now, for our change modifier, we're going to read the translation of the drag, which will say how far it's moved from the start point. That's translation. And we're going to assign that directly to drag amount. That's how far the drag has moved. So we can make the card move the same amount. For on ended, when the drag finishes, we're going to ignore the input parameter because all we're doing will set drag amount back to zero again, so it snaps back to the center. So we're going to add this modifier to our gradient now. There is a gesture. And inside there is a drag gesture. I'll give this thing two closures. On changed, drag amount is $0.translation. Remember, we're being passed in information about the drag. And we'll also say that on ended, uh, underscore in, ignore the value this time, drag amount is dot zero. So reset the dragging as it happens. Now let's run the code now. So you can see our little drag in action. We should have to drag our gradient card around. There we go. I'm moving it and it snaps back to the center when I let go. Beautiful, like that. This works, right? But we can bring it to life with some animation. And we have two options here. One is to add an implicit animation to the whole thing that will drag the, uh, the, the animate the drag and animate the release, or add an explicit animation to animate just the release so it snaps back to the center. To see the implicit animation in action, add this modifier to the linear gradient. Dot animation, dot spring, drag amount. So we're watching that value for changes. And now, as I drag the card around, there'll be a slight delay because it's animating it. So I'll move, say, uh, down here or up here. There's a slight delay now as I'm dragging it around. It's not instant anymore. See? And I release, it'll move back to the center again. 
So it's animating the dragging and animating the release, which is nice. If you want to see an explicit animation, remove the implicit one and instead modify on ended to this. So still underscore coming in with animation, change drag amount to zero, and then end on ended like that. Now this time the card will follow our finger immediately as we're dragging around. So it's, it, there's no animation dragging anymore, it's just instant. But when you release, that's when it snaps back immediately with the animation. So it's very, very fast uh, when we're just dragging it around, but letting go will animate like that. Now if we combine offset animations with a little bit of delay on a drag gesture, we can create remarkably fun animations without a lot of code. Now, I want to show this to you because this is a lot of fun. Let's scrap this code we have so far. We're going to write the text string hello swifty y as a series of letters on the screen, each one with a background color and an offset controlled by some state. Now, strings are really just fancy arrays of characters, so we can get a real array from them by saying array some string. So I'll say, up here, let letters be the array of hello Swift UI. Convert this thing from a string into an array of H E L L O, comma, space, and so forth. Then we'll say there is an at state private var property called enabled equal to false and at state private var drag amount again so we can track how far we've dragged. And we'll do CG size zero again. Now inside our body, we're going to add a H stack. So we'll have our views lined up neatly, but I'll add to this spacing zero. So our letters are side, side by side, but no gap between them. Inside there, I'll say is a for each, counting over zero, two, oops, sorry, zero, two letters dot count, like that, with a number coming in, which letter we're currently reading. I'll draw a text to you showing the string of letters that number. So H, E, L, L, and so forth. With a little bit of padding around it. And a nice chunky font like title. For the background color, I'm going to say if enabled is true, use blue. Otherwise, use red. Attach this thing to our offset using drag amount. So it'll move around as our finger moves. But we'll add an implicit animation here. We're going to say there's an animation of default watching the value drag amount. So move the letters with us as we move. And now say our whole HStack has a gesture attached to it. Gesture here. This will be the same drag gesture we had before pretty much. Drag gesture on changed. We'll say drag amount is dollar zero dot translation on ended. Ignore the value coming in this time. Put drag amount back to zero, but then also toggle enabled. So it flips between true and false again and again and again. Now run this code back and see what you think. We should see hello to the UI, and when I grab it, it'll move around. As I release, it'll switch. Uh, colored from red to blue, like that. So that's that's kind of neat. But we've made these things be distinct views, and so we can animate them uniquely. We can say the animation I want to apply here is default, so easy and out, but with a delay. I'll do default dot delay, and the delay and apply will be the double of num. So our index in the letter array as a double divided by 20. So for the zeroth item, it'll be a delay zero. For the 20th item, it'll be a delay of one second. Otherwise, the same. So we're going to delay our animation based on the letter's position inside the string we're trying to draw and see what happens now. Here's Hello Swift UI. I'll pull it down and look, they all follow in their own sort of snaky way like that. When I release, it'll all turn blue or back to red again. Absolutely beautiful, honestly. That kind of effect uh, is doing nearly all the work for us. So 
We've got this sort of snake-like animation happening as we drag the string around. We get the color changing happening for us. It just looks fantastic without a lot of code.